In explaining sutras, some use the methods of the Tian Tai school, and some use those of the Tian Shou school, two great teaching schools of Chinese Buddhism. The Tian Tai school was a system made taste by the great master Chu Chia, who divided the Buddha Sutras into five periods and eight teachings. The five periods are one, the Avatamsaka period, two, the Agama period, three, the Vaipulya period, four, the Brahma period, and five, the Dharma flower and Mahapari Nirvana. Periods. Within the five periods, eight teachings are distinguished. One, the storehouse teaching. Two, the pervasive teaching. Three, the separate teaching. Four, the perfect teaching. Five, the sudden teaching. Six, the gradual teaching. Seven, the secret teaching, and eight, the unfixed teaching. Each of the five periods listed above is likened to five kinds of milk products, as will be seen. One, the Avatamsaka period. After his enlightenment, the Buddha first spoke the Avatamsaka Sutra. The sutra consists of three volumes, only the last of which exists in the human realm. The other two being stored. In the Dragon Palace, having mastered all the literature in the world, the Bodhisattva Dragon Tree, Nagarjuna, went to the Dragon Palace to read the Tripitaka. While there, he memorized the last volume of the Avatamsaka Sutra, since he had the ability to memorize anything after it had. Passed his eyes only once. He read the sutra once and brought the last volume back with him in his memory. The Buddha spoke the Avatamsaka Sutra for twenty-one days, but only the Bodhisattvas heard it. Those arhats and bhikshus of the small vihara did not even see him. It is said they had eyes but did not see the reward body of the Buddha. They had ears but did not hear the perfect sudden teaching. They failed to see the ten thousand foot tall reward body which the Buddha manifested. We may think that ten thousand feet is very tall, but compared to Amitabha Buddha's reward body, it is very small. As the verse in praise of Amitabha Buddha says, the fine line. From between his brows shines as high as five Mount Sumerus. His purple eyes are clear and broad as the four great seas. Most people are unable to imagine the size of one great sea, let alone four. The enlightened patriarchs of the past, who saw Amitabha Buddha's fine marks and adornments, wrote such a verse in his praise. Compared to Amitabha Buddha's fine light and violet eyes, everything else is very small, including the ten thousand foot reward body which Shakyamuni Buddha manifested. But those of the two vehicles, the South Heroes, Shravakas, and Conditioned Enlightened Ones, Pratyeka Buddhas, did not see it, even though they had eyes. They had ears, but. They didn't hear the perfect sutton teaching. Those of the two vehicles had ears, but they did not hear the Buddha speak the Avatamsaka Sutra's great drama. So the period of speaking the Avatamsaka Sutra was for teaching great Bodhisattvas, the Mahasattvas of the ten directions. The five periods of the Buddha's teaching are. Represented by an analogy to milk products and to the rising sun, the Avatamsaka period is compared to whole milk, raw and unprocessed. It is also likened to the newly risen sun, which first shines on the high peaks. 
The drama spoken by the Buddha is analogous to the sun, and the high peaks are analogous to the Bodhisattvas to whom the Buddha first spoke the drama. They are like the high peaks because among living beings, the Bodhisattvas are the highest. Two, the Agama period. Agama, a Sanskrit word, means incomparable drama. For none of the dramas of non-Buddhist religions can compare with it. It surpasses all of them. During this period, the small vehicle teaching was set forth. It can be compared to coagulated milk, which is extracted from whole milk and which is easy for children to digest. Straight raw milk is very strong and nourishing, and so it is used to represent the Avatamsaka teaching. The Agama teaching is like a coagulated milk, good for children. When the Buddha taught the Agamas, the sun had risen a hundred feet, and its light reached the dark places in the valleys where the light of the newly rising sun of the Avatamsaka did not reach. So even the smallest of the small vehicle and the stupidest of pupil could understand this drama. The Avatamsaka is considered to be to belong to the Satin teaching, also it is also a greater teaching. The Agama period is called the storehouse teaching. Three, the Vaipulya period. Vaipulya, also Sanskrit, means extensive, and during this period, the pervasive teaching was expounded. The Vaipulya teaching pervades the former Agama teaching and the following Prana teaching. It is like a curdled milk, good for children and adults. Both those of the small vehicle and those of the great vehicle can study the sutras of this period. It is represented by the time between 9 and 10 in the morning when the sun shines on the high peaks and on the level ground. For the prana period, prana is the separate teaching and it is a means of entry into the great vehicle. Prana is called the separate teaching because it is separate from the pervasive teaching of the Vipulya period which precedes it and also separate from the perfect teaching of the Lotus Nirvana period which follow it. The separate teaching can be compared to butter which is extracted from cuddled milk and suitable for adults. It is also like the period from 10 until 11 in the morning when the sun shines upon the entire earth and is approaching but has not yet reached the noon position. Prana is a Sanskrit word because it has three meanings. It is considered a term with many meanings. Prana is therefore not translated but kept in the original language. There are three kinds of prana, literary, contemplative, and real mark. Literary prana, literary prana refers to sutras, shastras, and the vinaya. It is a transcendental literature. It is most certainly not the literature of the world. Knowledge gained through mundane writings is not prana, but only worldly intelligence and cleverness. Contemplative prana. Contemplative prana means that through the use of wisdom, one regards and illuminates all dramas. As it says in the Heart Sutra, when the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara was practicing the deep prana paramita, he illumined and viewed the five heaps all as empty. Real mark prana. The real mark is unmarked and yet it is complete with all marks. It includes all marks. All marks flow from the unmarked and that is just the real mark prana. 
by means of literary prana, one gives rise to contemplative prana. With the contemplative prana, one in turn penetrates to the inherent real mark prana within one's own nature. 5. The Dharma Flower Nirvana Period. This is the ultimate teaching of the Buddha. The teaching of the wonderful Dharma Lotus Flower Sutra do not look lightly on the Dharma Flower. It is the Buddha's ultimate expression, the most final Dharma door. The four preceding periods were all taught to pave the way for the Dharma Flower Sutra, and so it is said that the Dharma Flower opens the provisional and manifests the real. The teachings of the other four periods were manifesting the provisional for the sake of the real. The dramas contained within them were touched for the sake of the Dharma flower. The Dharma flower opens the provisional and manifests the real. It unknows the provisional and establishes the real, thus dispensing with all former expedient Dharma doors. The Dharma flower sutra is the Buddha's true mind. The Dharma flower sutra is the Buddha's true body. The Dharma Flower Sutra is the Buddha's Dharma body. The Dharma Flower Sutra is the Buddha's reward body. The Dharma Flower Sutra is the Buddha's response body. Students of the Buddha Dharma who have not thoroughly understood the Dharma Flower Sutra have not yet obtained the genuine taste of the Dharma. The genuine wonderful meaning of the Buddha Dharma is contained within this sutra and therefore it is said to be a wonderful Dharma. The Dharma of this sutra is compared to the lotus, the king and most rare of flowers. The lotus grows from the mud but remains unsorted. Also its roots are in the mud, it grows up through the water. While in the dirt, it transcends the dirt. The lotus flower is a wonderful lotus, a super flower. This sutra is the ultimate sutra. It is said, with the suragama, one develops wisdom. With the Dharma flower, one becomes a Buddha. If you wish to realize Buddhahood, you must certainly study this sutra. In Buddhism, the Dharma flower and the Suragama occupy the most important positions, especially the Dharma flower. All other sutras were spoken for the sake of the Dharma flower and so it is called the King of Sutras. That we are now able to investigate this sutra is an unspeakably wonderful opportunity. The Dharma flower sutra may be compared so the sun at high noon, which shines upon the entire earth, the high peaks, the deep valleys, and the level ground. This sutra is the Dharma door of opening the provisional to manifest the real. For what one purpose did the Buddha come into the world? The Buddha manifested himself in the world expressly for the purpose of speaking the Dharma Flower Sutra. Now we have a chance to listen to it, and in the future we will come to thoroughly understand its wonderful principles. Thus, our very hearing of the Sutra indicates that we have planted gurus for limitless ends, which have now enabled us to meet this opportunity. This is an inconceivable Sutra and a most rare Dharma assembly. The Buddha lived for the purpose of speaking the Dharma Flower Sutra and we are now able to hear it. We should give rise to great joy. We should consider how rare it is. Think it over. In all the years since America became a nation, how many people have had a chance to properly and truly listen to the Dharma Flower Sutra or the Suragama Sutra? No one. Some may have read translations, but that is like an ant nibbling at a watermelon. It runs around and around, nibbling here and there, but never tastes it. 
Reading through trust on one's own is like the ant nibbling at the melon. The melon is sweet, but no matter how long the ant runs around on the outside, he has no way to get into it and taste its flavor. Now we have opened the melon where people, not ants, we can taste it. According to the five flavors analogy, we have seen raw milk, called gillet milk, cuddle milk, and butter used to represent the first four teaching periods respect respectively. The fifth period, the drama flower nirvana period is likened to clarified butter, the finest and most subtle of tastes. The teaching of the drama flower sutra is like the wonderful taste of clarified butter, the world's most delicious flavor. Nothing tastes better. Now, as we open the drama flower sutra, we can each find out for ourselves just what that flavor is. During the fifth period, both the Dharma Flower and the Nirvana Sutras were spoken. The Dharma Flower took eight years and the Nirvana took one day and one night. The aim of the Buddha was to speak the Dharma Flower Sutra. It is said to be purely complete and solitarily wonderful. It is purely complete because It is the pure perfect teaching and is not mixed with the storehouse pervasive or separate teachings. It is only the perfect teaching. Thus, in Buddhism, the Dharma Flower Sutra is the most important. Students of the Buddha Dharma who have not read, recited, or heard it certainly cannot be said to understand the Buddha Dharma. Why not? The speaking of the Dharma Flower Sutra was the final goal of the Buddha's life. If Buddhist disciples don't understand it, they don't understand Buddhism, for they have not understood clearly the wonderful Dharma. The Dharma flower sutra is like the blazing sun at midday, shining on all the mountains, rivers, forests, and plants. The hills and valleys all receive this universal illumination. In the Dharma Flower Assembly, all are said to be destined for Buddhahood. In the second chapter of the Sutra, the Buddha says, If people with scattered thoughts enter stupas or temples and say but once homage to the Buddha, they will all realize the Buddha way.